Hey everyone, welcome to this week's episode of the Cross Chain Insider, a weekly roundup of all news traveling across chains brought to you by LeFi. I'm Mark, a member of the BizDev team and a holder of airdrops. My Gigabrain co host is Arjun, the jack of all trades and master of everything here at LeFi. What is up, Arjun? Uh, everything's good, and I'm a seller of airdrops. <laughs> I haven't been getting many airdrops recently, so I guess I should probably change up the intro. Um, but so as usual, this is the cross chain insider. Um, as you can see on the screen, our June writes this as an actual newsletter every Monday. And then, uh, usually in the next 12 to 24 hours after it's published, we come on and pod about what he wrote our June. As always, we start with the bridging updates from the week. What do you have for us? Yeah, so let's start with, like, this has been a big week for us, by the way. And um, we finally announced our 5.5 million strategic round. Uh, the round actually completed like two or three months ago or even earlier than that. But this, like, finally you've decided it's time to announce. So this round was led by 1KX and it saw participation from Dragonfly Capital, Lattice Fund, Scalar Capital, Coinbase, Rocktree, and many, many of the funds. And it saw uh, participation also from like angels, uh, like DC Investor, Bankless, uh, Mudit Gupta, Anthony Sasano, and this is my favorite part, right? Like so, they it, it also saw participation from OG bridge builders, like the the builders from Biconomy, Sea Bridge, Nomad, Connext. Uh, so yeah, it was just a great uh, round that saw active participation from the entire bridge ecosystem. And it just feels nice to finally have this news out. And yeah, so the capital will be used to integrate more bridges, more DEXs, get uh, our product, our widget, our SDK integrated into more established applications and just grow the team and increase awareness about Lisa. What do you, how do you feel, Mark? Oh, I'm super excited. I've been dying to see this published for a while. Uh, we also got on Coindesk, which was like kind mm -hmm. of a surreal uh, to see us go up on the live wire. Uh, just because, you know, I've been in the space for probably two, two and a half years now. Mm -hmm. uh, it's kind of crazy to say that. <laughs> um, and to see Levi on Coindesk, I was like, whoa, we, we haven't made it yet, but it's it was it felt good to be like, oh, this we're, yeah, we're building Coin, something Coindesk really cool. is uh, mainstream crypto media. Yeah. So it felt nice. But yeah, so moving on to Connext. So they announced that they're going to postpone their uh, token launch. And they cited recent market conditions and volatility uh, as the reason for this delay. And who can blame them, right? Like the market has been pretty bad, uh, barring the last week, like last week has been crazy. But yeah, so they the team said that they're just going to uh, postpone the token launch. And in this uh, short delay, they all the efforts will be prioritizing the upcoming Amarok upgrade. So yeah, and uh, up next we have Klima cross-chain carbon offsetting. So another uh, LeFi news. So we've partnered with uh, Etherspot to facilitate cross-chain carbon offsets for Klima DAO. So what uh, is happening here is basically there's LeFi, uh, which has the ability to perform any-to-any cross-chain swaps and Etherspot, which can uh, batch transactions and uh, without switching the RPC and Klima, which lets users participate in the carbon market uh, through Klima. So all of these projects are coming together and together it's like building a cross-chain uh, carbon offsetting green product. And uh, all of this is done in just three clicks and it's possible to do this on 15 chains supported by DeFi. What do you think about this, Mark? I think this is one of the cooler use cases we've built out. Anytime you can do a cross-chain interaction in one user interface, it just like gets me so excited. Mm -hmm. uh, so. I'm 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 thrilled. I'm really hoping Mark Cuban tries this yeah. out. He's a huge I was going to say that. Guy. I was going to say I hope the other Mark also <laughs> tries it out. Yeah. But but you're probably the other Mark uh, in general. <laughs> but yeah. So so moving on. Abacus uh, Abacus Network is now live on uh, Mainnet Alpha. So Abacus is a cross chain messaging uh, protocol that lets developers build interchain applications. So they just launched their uh, mainnet alpha and uh, dbridge they've published an audit report repository on github 
So it basically lists all the different reports from their security audit partners. So it's, it's just nice to make all of this information easily accessible for everyone in this ecosystem. Uh, moving on, we have a cross-chain call library for Solidity by Zach. Uh, so this is, I, you're very excited. Do you want to <laughs> talk more about this? Um, I don't really have too much color to add here. I just, this is, this is one of those headlines that doesn't seem that interesting. Mm -hmm. It's some big protocol. It's not some, it's not like Solana is now going EDM compatible. Oh, no, but like solidity language that a lot of smart contracts, Ethereum, pretty much all smart contracts on Ethereum are written in. And so for someone to be building out a solidity library for cross chain calls, uh, like that's just, that's fantastic. Mm -hmm. Like this is, this is the base layer stuff that we need for developers to be able to plug and play cross chain contract calls um, into dApps. I'm very excited. Yeah. And it's the product is called, uh, the library is called X chain. It's a solidity library for cross chain calls in forge tests and scripts. So for developers who know what that means, please go check it out. And uh, <laughs> Up next, we have uh, uh, Rubik has integrated LeFi. So Rubik is also a cross-chain bridge aggregator and they've integrated LeFi. So it's like a very strategic integration because this allows them to uh, now suddenly support more chains, more DEXs, more bridges. So it's like, it's basically allowed them to uh, add over 50% more chains to their ecosystem, which is a big number. And yeah, I'm kind of like, surprised and excited to see this sort of integration because it's like you would think Rubik is a competitor, but they've integrated our product, which is good to see. Hey, what have I said on this podcast before? There's no competitors in this space. We're just, we're all, we're all building for interoperability. Um, also, that's such a hard word for me to say, interoperability. I, like, I just call I it like interop. I, interop, yeah. I always feel like I add an extra A in there or an extra I. Um, okay, so that was the bridging update section of the Cross Chain Insider. Next, as usual, is the multi chain ecosystem updates. Let's see if I can choose the correct tab to start with. Oh my gosh, it's almost like I practiced this. All right, so Arbitrum Nova is live. Uh, so Arbitrum announced Nova, a new chain for gaming and social apps built using the AnyTrust technology. Um, Nova is now open for devs to deploy their dApps on. Um, this is running parallel to Arbitrum 1, which is what you usually think about when you think about Arbitrum. Um, it is being fairly launched right now. Um, and the kind of the difference is that they're using a data available a data availability committee instead of putting all transaction data on Ethereum. So I'm pretty interested in to see in, into seeing what is built on Arbitrum Nova. Um, my pretty much my goal in life is like i've just been thinking about this a lot i need all of these nft games and play to earn games and pretty much anything that has a gaming mechanism i need them to be built on l2s and i need to, them to tokenize and drop like really dope nfts on mainnet because mainnet nfts and tokens are like way cooler in my opinion and then you can actually go play the game on the roll up and then you can have like these cross chain contract calls between the roll up and the i guess it's really not if it's on the roll up, it's not that much of a cross chain contract call, but it, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm yeah. interested in that use case, uh, and would love to see people doing that. I think that's a very possible and idealistic solution because that's like you get the best of everything. Look, I'm a dreamer. <laughs> this is this is the part where our uh, our, our guy, our Marco, who, who who publishes this guy, this podcast, I can't believe you've never shouted out Marco before. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, but he like he just starts shaking his head and he's like get back on track guys. get back on track <laughs> anyways next topic uh, brave now supports solana dApps uh, brave has upgraded its support for solana ecosystem um, users can now access dApps like magic eden audius step in um, directly from the brave wallet uh, this is just another step in the user experience wars that solana seems to be waging um, where they're going for the mobile tech stack. They're going for integrations with Brave, which pretty much any self-respecting crypto user is using Brave at this point. Um, and I think this is going to be a clean way for 
uh, people to hop on the Brave and go directly to Solana dApps. I'm excited about this. I think this is ad. such a big news in general, but this was not picked up so much. Like I also just saw it somewhere once or twice throughout the week. And I think this is such a great improvement in user experience. I think Brave is really like pulling all the stops. Yeah, I love Brave. Next, we have Akala. Akala Network, it's a Polkadot pair chain. It announced a $250 million ecosystem fund. The fund provides support to early stage projects looking to build with the AUSD stablecoin. Um, eligible, eligible projects, it doesn't have to be directly built on Akala. It just has to be using AUSD. So if you're building on Polkadot or, or Kusama pair chain, you can also apply for a grant here. Uh, 250 mil is a lot. So go apply. I think there's just a lot of uh, seed investments in that 250 million ecosystem fund right? because they're targeting early stage projects. And for an early stage project, even like 1 million in funding or 2 million in funding just to kick things off is huge. Yep. So that's, I'm, I'm, I'll be keeping an eye on that. Usually when you see an ecosystem fund like that, token price just jumps immediately. <laughs> Um, so I haven't even looked at it yet. Okay. So next we have angle protocol. Um, it is now live on polygon angle is an over collateralized stablecoin protocol, um, which is, uh, I believe it's called the AG Euro stablecoin. So mm-hmm. AG EUR, uh, users can now borrow Euro pegged stable coins on polygon. Um, this was previously just on Ethereum. So now you can mint a stable coin without having to go through the crazy gas fees on Ethereum. Cello had a network outage last week. The network experienced an outage on the 14th of July and was halted at, uh, I believe this is the 14 millionth block. Thank you for writing that into the the notes there, Arjun. You're testing me if I could read out my numbers. Uh, The validators have since resolved the issues and the network is up again. Uh, This was Cello's first outage since their mainnet launch on uh, in April of 2020. I do believe the network was down for nine hours um, Mm -hmm. based on everything I was reading and their uh, block explorer. Uh, I didn't see a reason why their network went down. I don't believe a postmortem has been shared. Yeah, I, I couldn't find it either. And uh, you read the number wrong, by the way. That's not 14 million. What is it? Because the, the commas are wrong. Oh. <laughs> See, I knew it. What but is I, it I, didn't, I didn't write it. Like, I just copy-pasted the numbers. So it's not my fault either. <laughs> okay. Um, oh, I, yeah, I totally did read it wrong. Okay. <laughs> Whatever we have going on here. That's the number, guys. It starts with a 14. Okay. Um, ooh, okay. This is my favorite. Well, I just kind of fangirled. That was really embarrassing. We'll have Marco cut that, but he won't. Anyways, um, the Polygon is a Disney Accel- Accelerator Pro. Um, wow. Polygon is a Disney, Disney Accelerator uh, company now. Polygon has been chosen to be a part of the Disney Accelerator program in 2022, a business development program designed to accelerate the growth of innovative companies worldwide. Details on this are kind of sparse right now, but needless to say, Polygon being part of Disney's Accelerator program is mm-hmm. really cool. Really, And cool. I think there are only like six companies that are part of this uh, Accelerator yeah, this is another one of those headlines where if you had pulled 2020 me, that 2022 me would be reading this, I would have been like, wow. Mm-hmm. So like we're mainstream. This is like, we're, we're like, is, is Ethereum and at like at I don't know why, $1? but recently we've started seeing so much more advertising for Polygon in India, like in real life advertising, which is just really nice to see. I can't speak on that personally. I'm just saying like, uh, because I don't know, Indians kind of associate one industry with one company. Like they like that analogy or like, okay, they like to associate companies with the industry. So Polygon for us is like representing India in terms of blockchain and crypto. So there's a lot of advertisement. Hey, they're doing a good job. Yeah. Disney Accelerator Program. Ooh, I said it without stumbling this time. That was pretty (laughs) good. Okay. 
last bit of news, which I'm going to go pretty, uh, I'm going to go minimal overview here because I know you want to talk about it in depth. But the merge timeline, it isn't final, but Tim Biko of the Ethereum Foundation, he gave us an actual date. He said a date or June. And it wasn't like, oh, it's going to happen on this month. It was, it's going to maybe happen on this month and this day. Yeah. It kind of said like this, the week of 19th September. Hey, don't, don't like give me this one. Okay. Anyways, we'll go to the next section of the pod and you can really deep, deep dive into this. So that was the multi-chain ecosystem updates. Next, we have what's popping on Twitter, where Arjun gives a small recap of, well, what was the most exciting topic he read on Twitter um, for the last week. And we will go back to your, I believe you threaded about it, didn't you? Yeah, I did. I did. And the first picture is my favorite part of the thread. Oh, it's here. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's Vitalik. Yeah. So it's again, like, it, like you said, we have a date now and the merge is now planned for 19th. September. So I, I, I won't go into the details about the merge, but I've kind of covered that in the thread, like what it is and what changes we can expect. So what has happened now is there's like, there was a roadmap to the merge, right? So the devs have now come up with an update that, okay, we're just one test net away from the actual merge. So stage one was like more shadow folks. Stage two was poking Robston. Stage three was poking uh, Sepolia and stage four. So stage three, t- till stage three, we're done, right? We've successfully done everything. But now stage four is poking Goerli, which is the uh, last testnet that's left to be uh, successfully merged to POS. And that is planned for uh, 11th of August. So once that goes through and there are just a few more updates, like the uh, Bellatrix update, love that name, by the way. And uh, after that, there's nothing left but the merge, which we can expect to see in the week of 19 September. I hope it happens on the exact date, but it says on the week in the week of 19 September. Okay, I will add the merge timeline that was posted here isn't final. We do have to say that. So Suggested timeline change. for discussion. This is a timeline for discussion. Um, however, this is a like the Ethereum Foundation all in the Ethereum core developers have been very reticent to actually give, give any a date. specific date. Um, and so I'm looking forward to this. The girly, gorly merge. I can't speak today. This is terrible. Um, on the 11th will be huge um, and we'll know more information then. So it's kind of, it's the September 19th date. It's pretty much going to hold until the 11th correct what do you mean 11th when the girly more yeah wow yeah. <laughs> right she yeah. i can't i can't speak this morning it's so bad can you okay. can you scroll down to the last tweet that has another image or meme oh yeah i got you this this will be <laughs> <laughs> this will be all of us if it goes through Arjun, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be honest. I don't think I scrolled all the way down to the bottom of your thread <laughs> the first time I read it. It's I fine. See, seen... there's there's always something that you miss out if you don't read everything. <laughs> um, I'll retweet it live. There we Thanks. go. Thanks uh, for the engagement. That's all yeah. I needed. <laughs> You're welcome. Okay, so <laughs> the last section or second to last section of the pod here is the interesting reads or listens section um, where Arjun and I kind of talk about some of our favorite things we read this week. And uh, maybe y'all, I think we should start taking some reader submissions here. Uh, For interesting reads, like what goes into this section? Yeah. We can like tweet out. We can be, Hey, what did you read this week? Hang on. Mm -hmm. And then our, our our five fans. Yeah. The saddest thing will be if no one replies and, I still have to do this alone. <laughs> I'll do I'll do it for my burner accounts. Okay. okay. <laughs> the first, what do we have? What do we have? So uh, first is Ethereum. Okay, fine. You change the screen. <laughs> yeah. Okay, here we go. It's on the right it's, tab now. Uh, it's Bridge Education, which is a list of all the uh, reads from the Bridge ecosystem or like Interop ecosystem. So this this one has like 
15 reads and none of these reads were like uh, uh from my past book right like like all of this all of these resources were gathered in the past week alone so there was a there was just a lot of content uh in the in the last two weeks in the bridge space so this kind of like uh has all of it together in one place for anyone who has i don't know how much time this will take to read but yeah just just go through this list of uh recommended reads here and you'll come out not smarter but at least you'll know more about bridges which will help you form a better opinion and not uh like use any bridge out there basically yeah, and you can just start saying really big words really confidently. Even if you use them incorrect, you can be like light clients, man. <laughs> <laughs> Those are light. <laughs> and your friends will be like, What you know what a light client is? You'll be like, Yeah, yeah they're light, they're light clients. Anyways, <laughs> that's why I read that's why I read the bridge education series. Anyways. Yeah. So uh the next one is like Ethereum versus Cosmos. So recently there's been a lot of like uh, discussion on Twitter, like because of DYDX moving to Cosmos. So Bankless, which is uh, almost always like pro Ethereum. So they've kind of done a deep dive into both of these uh, ecosystems and they've tried to answer the question, who is winning the modular blockchain race to scale crypto? Is it Ethereum or is it Cosmos? And they've uh, kind of tried to determine if both of these ecosystems are competitors or are they complementary? to each other. So this, this one is uh, a great deep dive based on like uh, both the ecosystem's technical capabilities and their ability to serve as a credibly neutral settlement layer. So if you're interested in blockchain, Ethereum, Cosmos, definitely worth checking out. Uh, last one is a deep dive by us. So Pontoon Finance is a, is a liquidity mirroring protocol. So it, what most people would think is a bridge, but it's a liquidity network. So if uh, it's a it's a new bridge, like I I like this one because it was uh, we were talking about a project that's like lesser known relatively in mainstream crypto Twitter media, and it was just nice to see that there's so many more projects that we've not covered yet. And if you want to learn more about Pontoon, definitely check it out. I like the vibes of pontoon. Like it's a good name. You know me. I like a good name. I don't know what it means. Pontoon. I mean, I think of a pontoon boat, and I, you know, I had my, you know, my uncle had a. Why pontoon do we boat. always come down to talking about names and what they mean? <laughs> Dude, because when it, like the name is the most important part. I, I disagree. If it has good vibes, it has good vibes. Yeah. Okay. Here we have a thread from. Adrian Hetman, which I thought was absolutely delightful. If you are looking for a, why should I care about cross-chain bridges and what are some of the issues slash what are some of the positives with cross-chain bridges that I should know about? Like what, what are the, what's the most important information I need to know? This is the thread for you. Um, look, I loved this. I loved the intro. I think he wrote this for me. Like, I think he listened to the cross-chain insider and was like, I think Mark needs a, a thread. This is my love note to Mark. And this is what he did. But anyways, I love this first little tweet here. He said, one thing you need to remember about bridging, assets cannot be transferred across chains. Isn't that so ironic? Like the whole, like we call this thing a bridging industry. And then like, you can't actually tokens natively from one chain to another. You have to do this like synthetic wrapping or you have to do a liquidity network or you have to do an arbitrary data message pass. And it's like, actually, you're not moving the token. You're moving the idea of the token. Yeah. To the thing is, like, this is the tech under the hood. But the fact that uh, so many users, or like 90% of the users still don't understand this. That's what like baffles me, basically. Yeah, but it was pretty good. He went into uh, the four big hacks um, and he kind of differentiated how each one was exploited uh, in, in a way that made sense. So you should definitely check that out. I always am just shocked at how big those hacks are. I mean, that's like $1.5 billion worth of tokens there. Mm -hmm. uh, but yes, I thought this was probably the best thread I've ever read on the cross-chain space, just because it was written in such an easy way to understand um, and covered most of the big, uh, big points. So there's that. 
uh, one other piece of content I will um, kind of. Yeah, I wonder who wrote it. Shout out. Uh, yeah, it's this cram.east guy. I don't know who that is. Um, it's me. Um, but it is, what is your favorite DAP? Thinking about, check out the forum post, Anon, which this should have been a different title, but Arjun, Arjun, Arjun just let me roll with it. You can tell if it's a really, if it's a really long title, I wrote it. Um, anyways, we kind of broke down compound maker and pulled together what they're talking about on governance forums. So with compound, uh, compound is finally leaving Ethereum uh, with their V3 um, code base. They're going to pretty much deploy on other chains. Uh, I kind of called this like a fast food chain deployment. Like it's like, you're going to have a compound chain on Polygon, compound chain on Ethereum, compound, like, like, you know, it's like you got, you can have McDonald's pretty much anywhere in, in, across the world and they're going to be pretty much the same, but maybe a little bit different. The flavor is going to be just mm -hmm. slightly different. And here the flavors are, you know, yield essentially. Uh, next, we had uh, MakerDAO. They're building their own dang bridge. Um, very interesting stuff going out over there at MakerDAO. Also, if you're looking for a governance form to just hang out on, which I don't know, Arjun, you <laughs> might be. <laughs> um, I think Maker's governance form is the best. Like they, They're always throwing out crazy ideas. Um, and then that, that, that should be a tweet. Like I, if, are you looking for a forum post to hang out on? <laughs> Let's chat. And then last pool together, um, they're looking to do a, a cross-chain EIP um, and really get multi-chain governance figured out where, you know, if you have tokens across the metaverse and you need to all vote on one chain, how do you actually do that? If you have, you know, pool together tokens on Polygon, Avalanche, Gnosis chain and Ethereum, and you have a vote happening on Ethereum, how do you vote from three separate chains and send those messages across? Uh, so that's kind of what this, uh, that's uh, kind of what- By the way, on, on Compound, like I, I found out something about them this week that I didn't know. So the last year or like a year ago, uh, they they tried to build a an app chain, but on Polkadot and it didn't work out well. Uh, so they So that product couldn't like, they couldn't ship that product properly. Uh, and they were like talking in support for DYDX and how they're moving to Cosmos and how that makes sense. Oh, yeah. how'd you find that out? I don't know. I'm just on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> that checks out. Yeah. <laughs> that really does check out. Okay. And um, I think we're to the end of the podcast, Arjun. Um, and so as usual... Hot take. We end it with a really, really spicy take, which like never ends up being that spicy. It's never spicy. <laughs> it's never spicy. I always want it to be spicy. But what do you have for us? What's on your mind? I think uh, we're going to see so many more app chains in the next one year. And that will just require everyone in the space to make uh, better connectivity with the Cosmos ecosystem. And like just figure out how to, how to like make EVM and cosmos interoperable or like connected very very well and ibc is working on like uh, connecting app chains within cosmos and then there are projects like axelar nomad that are working on the evm side of things so i'm very excited to see what uh, and like how these bridges uh, build a better user experience because right now it's not that easy if you're on evm to kind of bridge your funds to an app chain on cosmos so I'm, I'm excited to see what happens there. That was not hot at all. That was, that not, was not hot. hot. Wait, so it's not hot, but it's, it's what I can think of right now. Okay. Okay. Wait, let's, I'll... let's no pressure, but let's see your hot take. Now. <laughs> okay. My, I don't, I also have, this is like just a totally lukewarm take, but here's, I've been trying to think about the ultimate, cross-chain use case like what what thing do i want to see built so bad and here's what it is okay i need any token checkout on all my nft marketplaces that's what i need i need to be able to go show up and go to OpenSea and be like oh, man i need that jpeg i need it now and i have 300 dollars on binance 
and this thing is on Polygon. I don't want to have to think about bridging. I don't want to even have to really go and look if I have, like, I don't even want to have to switch my, my RPC network, right? I just want to be able to click buy and have OpenSea in my wallet to do everything for me and move those funds from Polygon, no, sorry, from BNB chain to Polygon, buy the NFT, and then have that NFT in my wallet in about five minutes. That's what I want. That day is probably not too far away. <laughs> With the way all of this development is going on, dude, I've been waiting. I need it. It's gonna, it's gonna really hurt my wallet because if that happens, all of my dust on chains is gonna be utilized to buy NFTs, and it's gonna be bad. Right now, it's kind of like stuck there because I'm too lazy to bridge it over because I don't want to bridge it over myself, right? I want, I want someone to do it for me. Um, send, send the funds to me. I'll bridge them over. Oh yeah, yeah. Do you want my seed phrase too? Yeah. <laughs> Not asking okay, you, for too much. Come on. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Um, do you have any, anything else to add? Uh, I think you posted an image of our upcoming uh, article on Twitter. Like you drew that yourself. So I'm kind of excited <laughs> to see that come to life. Just, you, should Brit, just yeah. go, you should just go on your profile and show everyone. <laughs> I, I, I think I don't think my computer is fast enough right now because yeah. I have like 700 tabs open. But if, but you, if yes. you don't follow Mark or like if you follow Mark, just go to his Twitter profile and check out that drawing and how he has misspelled bridge. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can't spell bridge somehow after writing probably 20,000 words on bridges in the, month, in the last month. Um, but yes, we do have a big article coming out called The Bridge. Bridge stack 2022. And that's all the information I'm going to give you on that. It will be coming and out. It's big. Soon. Like if it's it takes, big. if it takes Mark, like so many days to edit, it's big. <laughs> it's big. Um, so that'll be coming soon. We'll talk about the cross chain money logo next week, which we published uh, yesterday, but didn't have time to add into cross chain insider. Uh, outside of that, our June has a big write-up coming up on Friday. So uh, if you're a subscriber to the Crossing Insider, you'll get that in your inbox. If you're a listener but not a subscriber, be sure to go to our Substack. Um, that is uh, lefi.substack.com and subscribe. And uh, what are you writing about on Friday? I'm not going to tell you. Oh, you, it's a surprise. Yeah, because I, even I don't know yet. Yeah, it's going to be It's such a surprise our June doesn't even know. Like I'm, I'm uh, basically thinking about two or three different stories. I know we discussed like one topic, but I found another topic that I want to write about. Oh, you can't choose the topic. That's that's pretty on brand between <laughs> us. We have too many topics to write about in so yeah. little time. Um, okay, with that, that's the latest episode of the Cross Chain Insider. For more info, be sure to subscribe to the Cross Chain Insider newsletter that Arjun writes every week that covers a lot of the topics found on this pod. You can also check out LeFi, li.fi. We're building the ultimate cross-chain money Lego or bridge index aggregator, um, allowing users to swap any assets from any chain we support uh, in just a few clicks. Uh, you can check us out on Twitter at LeFi protocol. That is L-I-F-I protocol. Um, and you can find our Discord link and all that stuff there. Uh, thank you for listening.